Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, October 3rd. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, we're into October now, and this is the point in the hurricane season when things start to change a little bit. It's still the peak part of the hurricane season, and October in general is a very active month, and it's really not until the fourth week of the month that activity really starts to drop off as we head toward the winter season. And until the third or fourth week of the month, we usually have a, a fair number of storms on average uh, during a given season. And since 2017 is an active year with favorable conditions in the Atlantic, we might expect a few storms this month. And we are watching one area now. Uh, what does happen during October, though, is that we, we start to see less development in the central Atlantic. These waves that come off Africa and move westward, they don't develop as quickly as they used to, and uh, we start to see development confined more to this part of the basin here, uh, namely the Caribbean and north of the Caribbean in the Gulf of Mexico and the southwestern Atlantic. This is the most common place to see uh, these tropical waves develop, and uh, we start seeing some changes in the large-scale weather pattern, namely that it is fall, autumn now, and so we start seeing big fronts like this, uh, big cold fronts coming down out of the north. You can see this nice cool air pushing into Florida from the east-northeast behind this, uh, this big front, one of the first of the year, and uh, this can start interacting with the tropics and so you can get some pretty messy stuff uh, because fronts tend to, to make messy stuff happen in the Caribbean, and you get these big upper-level troughs that can also interact with tropical thunderstorms to the south. And uh, the other thing that happens is you get an enhancement of the Central American monsoon during the month of October. And what that means is a lot of westerly flow tends to come into the Caribbean out of the eastern Pacific. And the trade winds are always moving like this uh, to the north. And so you get this natural area of shear vorticity or spin in the middle here. And uh, so you get a lot of uh, large areas of low pressure that can tend to form. They're called monsoon gyres. We actually have one trying to form now. You can see the westerly flow coming in. Uh, to Central America and then the trade winds here. And so you actually have a bit of a gyre forming now. And we're watching a tropical wave that is moving into that gyre from the east. And when these waves move into these areas of natural spin, it uh, helps them spin up uh, because areas of nice background vorticity tend to enhance any disturbance that comes into them. And so we'll be watching this wave, specifically the southern end of it. You can see a cluster of thunderstorms in the southwestern Caribbean associated with the, the base of this tropical wave. And that's the primary area we're watching. Here's the close-up view from the NASA satellite page. And uh, again, I'll highlight this, this pretty uh, long wave axis. you got the southern end here. The northern end is also pretty active. We have a, a nice kink in the low-level flow that you'll see here if you look closely at the low-level cloud field. And so there's a nice little, let me draw it again, there's a nice little trough right here through northern Cuba. And uh, this is moving west into the Gulf of Mexico over the next few days. This is also tagged by NHC with only a 10% chance of development, very low, unlikely to develop here given quite high shear. You can see a lot of the cirrus clouds blowing off from the north, and this isn't really likely to develop, but it will bring showers and thunderstorms through the Florida Keys and southern Florida and into the Gulf of Mexico thereafter over the next couple of days. What is more likely to, to be of interest is the southern part of the wave, as I already mentioned. And uh, if you look at it right now, you'll see some semblance of rotation in the cloud field. This is actually mid-level, though. Uh, a lot of this convection has formed a mid-level low here. Uh, if you're looking for a surface low, it's, it's kind of hard to find one. You'll see the easterly trade winds coming to the northern coast of Nicaragua here. But if you actually look over Nicaragua itself, you'll see before the thunderstorms go up for the afternoon, some west-northwesterly flow in the cumulus cloud field uh, coming into the southwest Caribbean. So you can see the semblance of some loose envelope of uh, low pressure trying to develop here, rather elongated and probably not well defined under there but it's the start of something that could become better defined over the next couple of days because we have this large-scale area of convection, deep moisture here, and again, this is a tropical wave moving into an area of already enhanced vorticity with all this westerly flow coming into Nicaragua from the eastern Pacific and then the easterly flow north of that. So again, a natural spin zone in between, and the wave is moving into that. So as this, this feature begins to move northwest into the western Caribbean, uh, through Nicaragua, Honduras, and east of the Yucatan over the next couple of days, uh, it could become better defined. Here's the water vapor satellite picture, and uh, this shows again primarily upper level flow, and uh, here's our system down here. A couple of things to note, one is that we have a bit of an upper level low to the north of the system, southwest of Jamaica, you can see that in the rotation there, and uh, these can 
cause wind shear which is detrimental to these systems but in this particular case this upper low is quite small and it's not shearing the system very much and it's also going to get out of the way pretty quick it's moving southwest and it will move out of the way of this system uh, rather fast over the next couple of days these little upper lows can actually help kickstart convection on their southeastern flank, which you can see this one doing here. It may be enhancing the convection on the northern side of the system. And so these, these can actually help jumpstart thunderstorm activity near these disturbances. And if the upper level low just moves out of the way right afterward, uh, then that's actually a favorable setup for a disturbance like this. And uh, the question with this now is uh, where would it go if it's if it's going to try to develop over the next couple of days where will it move I've already hinted that it's going to move northwest and the reason it's going to do that is if we look back at the visible satellite imagery you'll see that again here, here's that wave axis so the system is embedded this wave axis is embedded in easterly flow here trade wind flow but then there's westerly flow on the southern end so what, what does this mean the southern end of the wave is making less westward progress than the northern end of the wave so this end of the wave will move west faster than this end will so this is going to lag here and then this wave axis instead of being like this will start to shift over like this so it'll start bending over and so in a couple of days you'll have a low here somewhere and uh, the wave axis is like this what this means is that the the southeasterly wind currently over here will be will be moving uh, eastward and starting to pull this low up toward the northwest once that wave axis pushes over on the northern side it'll start to drag all this stuff up from the south and you'll start to see this get up into the western caribbean in a couple of days uh, by the time we get into thursday friday and saturday and as it starts to come north uh, it may interact with nicaragua and honduras first but then it will have some time over water over the northwestern caribbean and after that point it will likely just keep coming north this is the gfs uh, 18 hour forecast it's for tomorrow morning Wednesday morning at the mid levels showing uh, the 500 millibar flow this is our broad low here and that's what you can see spinning that's the same mid level spin you see there here it is in the model and you can see the wave axis manifesting at the mid levels all the way up here where we have a pretty pronounced upper low associated with the northern end of the wave that's what you're seeing all up here so we have this big big wave axis and here's the low and again you get this big ridge to the north this is coming west and then this will follow it up so by the time we get out to friday our broad low is in here you can see that all this other stuff has come west it was over here now it's moved over and so you can see that this is now tilting the other way the result you have southeasterly flow coming out of the caribbean and starting to push this up toward the northwestern caribbean and eventually the gulf of mexico you'll see this ridge develop uh, east of the bahamas as this thing exits stage left and then all of this moisture and low pressure will get uh, dragged up from the south toward Cuba the Yucatan Peninsula and eventually the Gulf of Mexico uh, where does it go from here it's really not worth uh, guessing at this point because we're dealing with a rather broad system and again as always we talk about these when they're new they're young like this we don't know exactly where this might consolidate and there's always a chance it never will but there's a decent chance we'll see an area of low pressure form here and exactly where that forms in this giant area of uh, large-scale rotation we don't really know so as it comes in this general direction we don't really know if it's going to be over here over here over here and from there you know it could go all sorts of directions after that so there's really no way we can narrow down with much certainty where this could go if we get some sort of development but uh, we could say that given the pattern it's likely to end up in the Gulf of Mexico somewhere and so it's worth watching in the Gulf Coast states especially from uh, Louisiana eastward to Florida as we could at the very least see a rainy wet pattern uh, develop as this system starts to move up and you can see all this flow will just bring a lot of moisture up into this part of the world and so at the very least tropical rain is going to become uh, a feature of the weather pattern as we get to later in the week and toward the weekend and if we get tropical development along with that we will of course need to watch out now conditions will likely favor development of the system once it gets farther north because as this trough begins to move farther west uh, we will start to see a nice outflow channel develop on the on the the eastern flank you can see this upper level low begins to back west and we start to see a nice anticyclone or clockwise flow develop above the system this nice upper level high starting to form above the surface low and this is a rather low shear pattern in general that's currently modeled by both the GFS and the European model and so conditions here are uh, rather favorable for any kind of system that tries to come up into the southern Gulf of Mexico over uh, the next part of 
this week and into the weekend. And uh, the only thing really preventing development would be the large size and general messiness of what we're still dealing with for the moment. So until we have something very well defined and organized, nothing is going to happen quickly. But as soon as this starts developing, conditions would seem to favor uh, that development. So we'll be keeping an eye on this. NHC currently gives it a 40% chance of developing within the next two days and a 60% chance of developing within the next five. And again, general motion toward the Gulf of Mexico is expected with moisture rainfall uh, moving into the Yucatan Peninsula, Cuba, Nicaragua and Honduras first, and then the Gulf of Mexico and perhaps the U.S. states after that as we head into the weekend and perhaps into early next week. So we'll keep an eye on this and uh, keep you up to date over the next few days. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest information. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.